Welcome to your weekly US news update. And this week, I wanna talk about four different topics. The first one is a protest in Washington DC against the FAA NPRM for remote ID. The next one is Flirty, a company that we've talked about before that does drone delivery, was granted a parachute patent. So we'll talk about that. I wanna talk about something that's pretty big and really interesting, and that's gonna be the main topic for this uh, video, is a legal victory in Michigan for drone operators. And this is kind of a big deal. And the last one I wanna talk about the uh, remote ID and PRM and make sure you leave your comment. So I'm going to say this again until March 2nd. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing this week is the remote ID. Remote ID has been in the news a lot and for the right reason. People are uh, making comments. There's a lot of comments on there. I'll talk about this at the end of the video. But uh, there's a protest that's going to be happening in Washington, D.C. in front of the FAA headquarters. That's on February 27. And this is being put on by just a, a group that wants to make sure that the FAA hears their concerns about the NPRM. Now, I want to say that this does not mean that you should not comment. Even if you go to this, uh, this protest, I want to make sure that you send your comment. This is what the FAA is going to read. But uh, if you want to participate, this is going to happen right in front of the uh, FAA headquarters. There's a park right here called Hancock Park. If you want more information about it, you can go to helpsaveourhobby.com. I'm going to put a link right here. And remember that DC is a no-flight zone, so make sure that you do not bring, the organizers have asked that you do not bring your RC equipment. So I'll put a link as well to their Facebook comments. If you can make it, go ahead and make it and, uh, and tell the FA what you think. And again, make sure you submit a comment as well on top of it. The next thing I want to talk about is Flirty. Flirty is a company that we've talked about before. They have a delivery drone and uh, they are getting a patent for a parachute. And uh, the parachute in itself is going to deploy if the system uh, feels that there is an emergency situation. Uh, this is not something new, really. There's two other companies out there. We've talked about them before as well, Pair Zero and Indemnis that are doing parachute systems. Flirty plans to use these drones to do medical delivery. So if you want to see, here's a photo of the drone in itself. And uh, if you want to see more information, I'll put a link down in the comments as well. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of a big deal. This is in Michigan. This is in Janice County, Michigan. And um, what happened is back at the end of 2018, I think it was. So this, is, was this was a while back. A gentleman was flying his drone over a county park and uh, law enforcement came in and told him that he couldn't do that and he ended up being handcuffed in the back of a police car and not only that but they took away his drone and his ipad and, and his property basically as it turns out the the county over there has a rule that says that you can't fly and and and, and take it here this is what it says in their thing they said the balloons airplanes and parachutes were not allowed to be flying ascending or descending over a county park now as you know uh, uh, UAS is actually not an airplane, okay? An airplane is an aircraft, a US is an aircraft, but a UAS is not an airplane, it's not a balloon, it's not a parachute. So they were trying to expand this role to UAS as well, and as it turns out, they couldn't do that. And not only that, but there is actually uh, a preemption law in the state of Michigan that says that local counties and, and local uh, government, basically, cannot create their own UAS regulation, and so this group get formed, the Michigan Coalition of Drone Operators, and they sued the county, and along with the gentleman that was arrested, and they won. And this is kind of a big deal. They won, and, and basically the county now has to remove this regulation. Now, in the meantime, the county had backpedaled, and they had uh, added UAS to the list of aircraft that couldn't be flown over a county park. So anyway, this all went to court, and now, essentially they have to remove the regulation. Now, I've been following this case on the, on the Facebook group and actually the, the, one of the gentlemen that was enrolled, involved with the, uh, the, the lawsuit said that a couple days later after the county lost, they put new regulation in place that said that certain areas were now no-fly zones. And so I guess they haven't really learned their, um, their lessons in this case. And this is kind of important because this happens quite a bit all around the country. You have local governments that are trying to create regulation to prevent people from flying in the airspace. Now, the FAA has said over and over again that they have control of the airspace and that nobody can, can take care of that for them. So uh, local governments are not allowed to control airspace. They may be able, I said may, be able to control 
where you take off and land from. So you may not be able to do this from a public, from a, from a location that belongs to the city, to the county or whatever it is. Now in this case, the Michigan law actually prohibits local government from even restricting takeoff and landing on certain property for UAS. So this is even further a preemption that we usually don't see in other states actually. So this is interesting. The reason I'm talking about this, uh, you may not think that this is a big deal, but the reason I'm talking about this is because these people in Michigan decided that they were going to get together and go against the government and go against the local government and say, huh, you can't do this. And, um, and, and they won. So this should be a lesson for all of us. In case something happens in your county, you know that, or in your local government in your city, then you know that there, there are cases that are happening across the country where drone operators are actually winning these cases. So important that you remember all these things. And if that happens, then make sure you seek um, uh, legal advice from an attorney, an aviation attorney, hopefully. And, uh, and if you need a good one, let me know. I know a good one. And uh, that's it. That's really all I wanted to talk about this uh, in this case. The last thing I want to mention is the Remote ID NPRM. And if you haven't made your comment, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please, please, please go ahead and make a comment. Uh, we're now at 13,000 comments. We've got 18 days to go until the end of the comment period, which is March 2nd. And um, we created a common guide. Actually, it's been very well received in the industry. Um, uh, DJI actually mentioned our Remote ID a common guide in their article, in their common guide, and also the FPV Freedom Coalition mentioned it in their article. So uh, if you want more information, I think this is the most in-depth actually analysis of the NPRM uh, for remote ID. So you can find it here, pilotinstitute.com slash NPRM. And please leave your comments, get ideas from the guide, from any guide out there actually. Uh, I've seen a lot of really good information available and I think this is the reason why we are at the 13,000 comments now. I think for part 107, there was about 4,000 comments total. We're at 13,000 comments. So the FA is getting an earful as they should. And so please, please keep making comments and uh, Please keep making suggestions as well. This is important that we tell the FA not only what we don't like about it, but also um, how they should be able to fix it. So there's a lot of suggestion in our guide and other guides. So get educated. This is important. This is the future of UAS flying all across the country. So uh, make sure that you have a voice. And I, I hear people say making a comment is not going to make a difference. Well, sure enough, if you don't make a comment, it's never going to make a difference and you'll never know. So just go through the hour or so that it's going to take you to write your comments and, uh, and just submit it. All right, I'll stop right here. Um, as always, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. And for those of you last week that have uh, got the free t-shirt, it's on its way. And, uh, and this week I'm, off I'm offering one shirt for the first person that leaves a comment saying that they want a shirt. Just one. That's it. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right. You guys have a great weekend and I will see you next week.